build order and disorder in his model of, of living systems. Heinz put out a principle of self-organization in his paper in 1958, published in either 59 or 60. That was the early self-organizing yeah. systems paper. Which, yeah, which looks a very trivial paper, but he does bring in Schrodinger. It's actually completed in the Valnix Symposium 63. The paper where he makes is even more explicit, is that by disorder he means some a process going on. And even the little metaphor he uses of those, those uh, magnetic cubes in the box being shaken has brought process into the picture as well as the notion of ordering of this order. Uh, and there is a substrate or substance in both pictures. Now, in Heinz's picture, the notion of activity and perhaps action would be better is latent in the system, whereas it's, it's included in the system. Any logic of the system must take account of this. Whereas in Heisenberg's picture, Schrodinger's picture, sorry, not Heisenberg, Schrodinger's picture, picture um, process as usual is taken outside the domain of, of physics in his case. As indeed in most mathematics it is, so that a function may be represented, for example, equally well as a, a mapping with a domain and a range of an appropriate, either one one or one many kind. Or it can be represented as an action, because application, causality, and process are all, in fact, interpreted outside of standard mathematics and standard logic. Now, of course, they're not outside all logics or all mathematics. You have a couple of cases in logic, von Richt, uh, uniquely speaking of action logics, they're called deontic logics, um, is insistent upon the fact that we just don't need a modal logic of some sort, which happens to have values before and after that is interpretable. But you actually need a logic of action. Um, this idea, of course, is systematically degraded, as you might imagine. To bring it into kilter was mainstream. Um, but let's see about how it's degraded later. Another example is Carrion phase stuff on combinators, where a combinator is the notion of functionality in mathematics, and the notion of application of a transform. And successfully or not, Curry and Faze, with their combinators, bring the notion of action into mathematics. So that you can't have an unapplied combinator. And existence of combinators applies something on which they're acting. They're the complementary notions. One cannot exist without the other. Uh, so, similar comments apply, of course, to Heinz. Now, as one knows, the uh, logics of action of von Richt are taken by, for example, Akvist, Belknap, Harra, in dealing with questions which are necessarily action entailing in logic, and answers which are action entailing in logic or science. Uh, and they're taken by even Rescher in one work, uh, Logic of Commands, but more explicitly, uh, in the case of commands, which must also entail addressee and action. And the logic of commands is not a logic of command, it's a metalogic about commanding. Likewise, Harris and Aquist and Bell and Abbott, Harris, perhaps the most elegant, I don't know, uh, are logics of metalogics of already giving answerable questions or answered questions or something where you, you know the reply. And uh, there is a true statement this question was asked. Now, I mean, here, of course, Rescher is absolutely honest about the matter. 
because he, he will not talk about an obedience to a command, which of course is what von Richt is asking in that context to do with his action logics. But he talks about termination, which is correct. I mean, it's termination of a metastate. And it is, it, it, it is or has been or could be true that, as qualified in the metal language, uh, A asked B to sit on a table and either B did so or not. And B did so with the command statement terminated. We can also make a statement that we have a command statement which is true but it's not terminated. Neither of them actually say anything about obedience. They say something about termination in a pair of brackets which enclose the command into one. Now, the, uh, and that's what it's meant to do. I mean, this is perfectly honest, and actually the other logicians are honest. Mathematicians are not quite so honest usually. I mean, Alonzo Church, I think, got a word blue murder when he introduced lambda notation. There's a what kind of lambda notation, is a kind of, which is a way of, of naming a function as though it was a variable, uh, as a kind of excuse for uh, dealing in the proper way with combinate. And uh, it happens that it works very well if you have a, a completely linear ordered domain, completely linearly ordered domain. But, um, otherwise it won't. And um, Gunther is, in fact, the only logician I know of, uh, certainly that era, which will really get down to the notion of what, what was meant by a logic which could accommodate action in the way that Heinz in the domain of physics and others in the domain of, of logical systems, one sort or another, or mathematical systems, one sort or another, uh, alluded to as self-organization. And obviously, one of the things that is alluded to is the substance, which is indeed uh, the complement of the action, and which is uh, what Edgar Morin calls in a recent paper an auto, or might be called complete self-reference. In fact, Lofgren, amongst the mathematicians is unique in showing that indeed you can accommodate even in terms of set theory if you remove one of the axioms, preferably the axiom of choice from set theory, uh, you can have a completely self-referential system. Uh, however, it's still syntactical in nature. It actually has no particular interpretation. Gunther went a good deal further than that in saying there is no logic without an ontology its interpretation class will be its epistemology. Yep. Its interpretation class will be its epistemology, the meanings attached to the interpretations given. But there will be an ontology, that is there will be a, a class of entities, real, whether intellectually real or physically real or whatever, or concrete, or whether they be intellectual entities, they wouldn't mind. They're, they're real, they exist, it is just about an existential operator on top of them, if and only if the logic has its own ontology. And this is inescapable. And what we must seek are logics that are capable of expressing the ontology they induce. The so that expresses the ontology they want. Induce a logic which uh, has a syntactic frame large enough to express the ontology they induce. induce. Hmm. So, for example, if I have a TF logic only, true false, false logic only, then uh, I don't need any ontology excepting uh, the standard truth table, which is redundant, uh, and um, a couple of conditions or states which can flip and flop into each other. And all I should be careful about is saying that, okay, P and not P, for example, typical case, is a special sort of statement, not necessarily tautology only. And uh, hence, we're going to obviously have when we go beyond that, and in fact we're going to admit that, admit that into the logic rather than chucking it outside as something that is rejected. Uh, then we're going to clearly have some sort of 
idiotic pro curious process logic and we're going to lose a few advantages which is why of course everybody wants to put it back into the back, push it back into the mainstream uh, because uh, you lose proof theory for example you lose consistency you lose all of these beautiful attributes and um, most proofs in fact work upon showing that something P implies not P in a very complicated way um, uh, in which case you wouldn't deny and assert various things like cubes or whatever it is that mixed up with a particular statement of course. Uh, in fact all proofs can be said to work if you like in that sense except proofs perhaps by extrapolation well, even those do because eventually they do over a number system uh, the people uh, lose proof theory for example you don't lose demonstration but you lose in the Aristotelian sense but you lose proof uh, now, Gunter went on to continue uh, some very simple logics, which in that paper are just sufficient, I think, to explicate, or forget whether in that paper they're quite sufficient, certainly the later ones are, in which it appears, of course, that you will have a distribution of values <coughs> of logic. And the distribution is of two kinds. One kind is the basis of Lucas Arbitrage logics or probability theory, whichever you choose to call it. Uh, the idea of having a truth value that ranges from 1 to n or from 0 to 1 in fractional steps, such as the logic of probability theory. Uh, and you can, of course, interpret that in the world where you have independent things of which one and only one may be the case uh, at once, whatever that means, <laughs> as a, a probabilistic truth value or a, a variable, a distributed truth value, you distribute between the values of zero and one, or t and true and false, t and f. Uh, for example, the, the value of oscillate would be a value which was distributed in this sense. But to accommodate oscillate, you have to do another thing, namely you have to distribute also the morphograms of the logic, otherwise you have lost its explanatory power. You've lost the syntactic power of the system to express what you are saying. And you can't really have a sticking out value like Lewis's possibility or oscillate or something. It has to be expressed with a different kind of truth table. So you now begin to distribute over the values of the variables of the logic. And I'm sorry, what do you mean by distribute over the morphograms? Can go back? Uh, I mean if we have more complex expressions, so the truth table series will expand. You not only expand the TF values, but you expand the modality of the logic as well. Namely, the, the number of things it can do and the number of types of expression it can accommodate. It's not just the number of variables. And please be clear about that. You can do it in any logic. You can write standard truth tables for n variables arbitrary. It is not anything as trivial as that. It is saying there must be a different kind of truth table altogether, a different type of place holding of truth values in tables which are larger because there's some place to put them in. Is this? Uh, this is Gunter. Is this to say that you need, if you've expanded from simple true-false to a distributive mm -hmm. or something that looks like a probabilistic yeah, set that, of things, that you have to expand those entities about which <coughs> such truth values yeah. should be assigned? Yeah, this because I mean there is nothing. Futile, yeah. futile to, to uh, simply mm -hmm. Uh, expand mm -hmm. one yeah. without having a larger domain. Yeah. And it's futile unless you want to talk in a convenient way about probabilities, which is an external interpretation, which, 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 mm -hmm. which you see Gunter disallows. The logic induces its own ontology. Uh, so there are it, things, it, there are facts, if you like. If there's also a point five as yeah. well as zero or yeah. one and all the numbers in between, yeah. if, if you have those, then the, the things about which the logic speaks, yeah. the things about which the truth table, to which the truth table applies, yeah. the, the physical or intellectual yeah. Yeah. Re real object, mm -hmm. uh, must, uh, sh should be larger. Should be larger, and in order to express this largeness, 
you need more morphograms or more kinds of scheme you can fill in with place or ho holdings or truth value holdings or whatever <coughs> in order to be able to express the structure of it. Th this, is, this is a must when we wish the logic to be broad enough to describe those objects to which it applies. Yes. And the objects to yes. which it applies of what you refer to as the ontology of the logic yes. is those mm, things to which this logic uh, might refer. Yeah. Uh, I also, I, I, uh, formulation. Okay. do I hear something else, Gordon? D did I understand you correctly? If you have a logic, that logic will induce an ontology. Yeah. It does induce. I mean, the, the initial hap initial proposal, the really fundamental proposal of Gunther is every logic has its ontology. There may be any logic you choose. That is to say, the ontology which it induces is that set of objects, whether conceptual or physical, mm -hmm. or in between, mm -hmm. to which the logic could be applied. Is that sure. what you mean by what's induced? Sure. That is to say, one, once I say yeah. true and false is my logic, I have in part called a called into being coins, which can be heads or tails. That's right. That is to say, if I make the true-false logic, uh, coin, coins to which a true-false logic can be applied right. by calling true heads and false tails, uh, yeah. coins yeah. are induced yeah. by that. They, in other words, they, they, they form the class of things to which true-false logics can be applied. And in a certain sense, they are called into existence by uttering a true or false logic, yeah. and that is the sense in which these things are induced, yeah. is, is that yeah. the class of objects to which it applies uh, exists, even if I don't have coins, the class of coins is an intellectual object which is called into existence by yeah. uttering that our logic is true or false. So it's, a, it's in that sense that it's yeah. induced. It's not induced in that if you make yeah. a machine that has true or false as its fundamental yeah. logic, it goes and produces coins. Yeah. Uh, but the, yeah. that, the, that, that the logic yeah. itself has as its natural domain of application yeah. an ontology, a set of objects. Now, I'd like to make a comment, if I may, here, just to extend your very lucid explanation. And I do think it's very lucid. But while we've got it, and it's being talked about, I'd like to make a comment which may be unnecessary. I think, so far as you're concerned, it is unnecessary. As far as I'm concerned, I, I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, namely, that obviously you can have as many variables as you like, each of them corresponding to the action of a coin in its possible range. Yes, one may flip yeah. ten coins, or one may flip yeah. one. That isn't that isn't a yeah. change. And you could equally well have each of these variables with partial flips or something, but you'd still be dealing with as many variables as you liked. And statements about them, which were connectives expressed in some sort of truth table, would be universal statements about just that kind of thing. That number doesn't matter. They can have as many as you want. But what does matter is whether they're like coins, things, or whether they're oscillations, because I don't allow that coin to oscillate on its own. The, 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 yeah. it, it's distinction between, obviously, if I have a hundred coins, yeah. I now can talk about oh, yeah. uh, things that are not simply true or false yeah. by doing statistics. On yeah, the sure. You would do it ex but the individual external of the logic. It's yeah, outside external. the logic. That it's external of the logic. Yeah. I, I will ask the question, out of 20 coin flips, yeah. what is the probability that something is yeah. heads? Uh, that's importing a different logic, mm -hmm. the probabilistic logic, on top of yeah, it's a meta -logic. an ensemble of true yep. false logics. It's a meta logic, essentially. Yes. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's also, yeah. it, I, I'm taking an, an, an ensemble yeah. of yeah. true false logics. That's right. And the ensemble of true false logics and the statistics on that ensemble mm. of true false logic objects gives me a different logic. Yeah. In this case, a meta logic. But uh, it's a meta logic rather than a different logic, actually, just a meta logic. It's, it's, it's the same logic reapplied. Oh, this is, you want somehow to intellectually applied rather than somehow built up in the epistemological frame. A, a logic whose values went from zero to one second. Y yes, you could. Uh, the point is, if you gave a special meaning to one of these numbers, and since they're numbers, it's disallowed to give special meanings to them, mm -hmm. um, you can't actually have anyone to represent the oscillation of the coin, even though you can in a Lucas average logic uh -huh. you can have an infinite number of value. Okay. And nothing will represent, for example, the oscillation of that coin, or the coin getting up and saying, I am coin number 15, mm -hmm. or something like that. So what you're saying is, is that there are two different sorts of operations here. I can start from a true-false logic, and that 
carries with it the, one of its ontological objects is a coin. Mm -hmm. And then I can do a meta operation, which is to consider ensembles of coins or sets of coins. Yeah. And I can generate from there things which aren't true or false anymore. They're yeah. fractions and numbers in between mm -hmm. 0 and 1. But that is not the same thing as mm -hmm. uttering a logic whose values are, whose ontological objects yeah. are objects that are between 0 and 1. Mm -hmm. yeah. You take two. That, 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 mm -hmm. that in a certain sense, in both cases, I may utter sentences which are real numbers mm -hmm. whose objects are zero yeah. to one. But if I have merely done it by taking an ensemble of true false objects, mm -hmm. what I do not have is the ontological entities yeah. which go naturally with. Which, with, are, which, with which go necessarily with, actually. Yes, go naturally and necessarily yeah. with mm -hmm. that. That is to say that, that, that there are two different notions. Something, a logic which has values between zero and one might merely be a metalogic mm. over true or false. Yes. Or it might be about its natural ontological elements, yep. which are things who individually have values that lie in mm. an interval, rather than only collectively have values yep. that lie in an interval. Mm. Sure. Yeah, I, I, wanted, I, I was very interested in the exchange between you and Steve Palumbo. Mm -hmm. Stan, Stan. Stan. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I don't know but, but whether I'm bringing a bias to it, but again, to me, it's characteristic of, I think, a major miscommunication between those who are practitioners of, quote, therapy, mm -hmm. and what it is that I think you and Heinz and Warren and others are trying to get at. Mm -hmm. and. I don't know how to, uh, but let me tell you what I think is a clue, and I don't know how to interpret it. I was very interested by it. At the very end, just before he left, within minutes of his leaving, there was an interesting exchange between the two of you, where he then referred to what you had done on the, on the board and comments that you had made. And you asked him, well, how do you avoid getting trapped in the thing? And he said, well, it is hard work. Right. Uh, uh, and sure. but you see what's interesting is that he has does he have I'm asking I'm asking the four of you it seems to me that he has this he still has a concept of quote objectivity and quote I believe so you see I think he has it yes and I think you're quite and, right John. and and what this means is that and again I'm being speculative here for one thing. In, if, if I'm interpreting correctly, he denies his very humanity in the relationship with the patient, with the, with the therapist, because he keeps shuttling, he thinks he's shuttling in and out in terms of determining what is the reality. Oh, the father really wasn't the son of a bitch that he was, that, that the patient originally. And there's something, um, I'm trying to reach for something here. Well, I, I think I your question to, right. to uh, Gordon, perhaps, is uh, to pursue the, the question of process in, in this uh, I, I think the Gunter has something to say. Uh, has a great deal to say about this. I mean, he uh, says that you know, work, for example, which is a word that Stan happened to use, and a perfectly good word, a lot of work, mm -hmm. is a different kind of thing <laughs> to the kind of thing which is an interaction. So, yes, a different kind of thing, incidentally, to the kind of thing which is a stimulus, a word and a response word, or whatever or sentence, or whatever you like, I mean. Uh, and it is, uh, he must have a logic in which to accommodate that if he wants to talk about it logically, if he wants to talk about it formally. And I'd logically be damned, I mean, let's say formally talk about it, manipulatively talk about it, which was his expressed intention. And what I learned is very much what John has, has actually summarized, I think, beautifully. And I can see only one remedy to do this, namely to ask the gentleman in question uh, to consider the possibility that he cannot express what he wants to express unless in the first place he has a, a larger ontology in the sense that he has things other than coins and what have you, which I think he'd probably readily admit, but would try to do it in a metalogic. And uh, that would be insufficient because indeed his fundamental logic, basic logic or whatever you like to call it, and it's really fundamental the logic that has the induced ontology and is a natural, if you like, necessary description, whichever you like, of the, uh, of the phenomena with which he's concerned <coughs> is 
is one which also has a greater structure attached to it. It has more kinds of expression and variables or whatever. <coughs> more kinds of expression, just increasing the number of coins. It's got to have a different kinds of thing in it. And one of these, in his particular case, is a thing called work, which is predicated or predicable of those objects called psychiatrists or something, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, it's also presumably predicable, according to him, of, 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 of clients or patients, he calls them. Uh, and um, it uh, is a bit of a giveaway, actually, patient all the time. Uh, didn't seem like client. Uh, I, I know why, because in fact he didn't really believe that that operation is possible, but he knew it happened. And uh, he couldn't believe it, not because he doesn't himself believe it, of course. He's, I'm sure, an extremely good practitioner, and a brilliant one, probably. But uh, he, his logic doesn't allow him to the one he's stuck with. Well, isn't, isn't the remedy, as it were, or at least the, the means of um, continuing a serious conversation on the subject, depend in part on making explicit what his logic is? Well, I think so. I, I think this is our job as cyberneticians to do this. I mean, if I, if I was in the sort of, I was in the sort of semi-psychological, semi-cybernetical role because um, trying to make a brief dialogue with a gentleman who, who is a psychologist by, by profession, and primarily, at any rate, he's obviously interested in cybernetics and so on, logics and so on, and is obviously very unhappy about the current state of psychoanalytic theory in particular but um, in which one concurs, I think. Could you? But anyway, let me give a simple example just about these other things and how they have been handled. I'll give a couple of examples, one of which is certainly going to be familiar to all of you, and one of which may not be quite so familiar, it will be to John, because I know he's read Jack Cowan's early paper with Warren and Winograd and people. Uh, on that group up there with Jerry Litvin and Warren at the MIT. And it's uh, about 63, I think. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a bionic symposium, or an eight, I think a bionic, it must, must have been bionics, so it be USAP, I'm sure it was. One bit of, I mean, it could be ONR, ONR or USAP, I forget which. Um, you mean the IP? It did a beautiful, no, this is, is Jack Cowan. Uh, who took over from Ryshevsky, Chicago. And Count Ryshevsky retired from the chairmanship of the, what was it called, the Committee on Medical Biology or something. Uh, the, um, Jack Cowan took over the chairmanship and then they put in the rotating chairmanship later. And he was able to work Mike Albert again. Mike was part of that group too, as a matter of fact. But he was never a very sort of logically inclined guy to the same extent. He became interested later in that. Some extent. And um, Jack did this very nice thing on the. So this is my first example. I surround it with a, a history or a thematic extract for your perception. I remember the occasion very well. We were traveling from MIT down to Chicago. Uh, we'd flown down to some improbable place, and it was, I think, Columbus, Ohio, a Globemaster, and um, had a motor car, which then transported the whole lot of us uh, across the Midwest towards Chicago, where we were heading for Urbana, Illinois, we wanted to call in Chicago, and crop jack off there. And um, we got stuck in a hotel where there were just two rooms. And um, it was one of those country hotels in the middle of this thunderstorm, which was the most gigantic electrical storm I ever imagined. And I found myself sleeping in a bed in Warren and Jack between them. And these guys kept getting up periodically in the middle of the night, some excuse or other, and pacing around and trying to get cigarettes out of a machine outside. And eventually, this mangled machine gave up, and all its cigarettes came out of the floor. <laughs> and we had to pay the owner of the joint to, <laughs> to replace the stock because apparently we busted the mechanism by putting whatever it is, quarters or something, into this machine to 
and we had put some in that it hadn't worked and it was a continual source of irritation and um, generally just shortly after that Jack presented a paper in which he talked about the lattices of logics and the lattice of uh, true false logic is of course a thing like um, like this I mean it's just um, <coughs> Yeah. Uh, lattice of a Lucas Average logic. A thing like this. Of which logic? Lucas Average logic. Logic of probabilities, for example. Um, the lattice of the truth values of this logic will be things like it's not meant to be a negative cube, it's meant to be a cube that is point here which are going to be a variable attached to its TF values and so on and more complicated structures in which these structures are embedded will occur down here with a symmetric kind the embedments of these inside hypercubes just sketch them very difficult to draw they are drawn quite nicely in paper we go to the simplest non-classical logic so this is uh, T F Boolean. This one is the truth values of N variable, not a value, N variable Boolean. Uh, the decoration required to put a Lucas Average logic on this is to take place lattice points in the crystal structure. That work. Uh, you can then go on to logics which have lattices like that. T F possibility inconceivable uh, which is the lowest logic you mean inconceivable not necessarily impossible mm, they're called sort of opposites in a certain sense they're not negations and something may be inconceivable yet possible okay uh, whereas That's it sorry. can either be true or false so uh, there is an order attached to the lattice, in other words. I mean, these are lattices that put it at the top. The <laughs> truth values of these things are crazy little traps. It's very, very difficult to draw the bloody things. I mean, they, they, they are complex crisscross lattices of the most irregular kind, and I refer just to Cowan paper there. Gordon, I just want to make a comment to the two poles. You know, what, this is wild, but in terms of whatever the conflict is between the Soviets and the US, it comes down to perceptions and logics. and. You know, you could make a case that the real conflict is some ideological, logical battle that's going on. It has nothing to do with, quote, weapons and stuff like that. You know, and, could we and could we, who could we find in the Defense Department that is willing, that would be willing to speculate on a far off basis like that? I mean, ARPA used to be full of people, but I don't know what's happened to it anymore. You know, I mean, that would be a contract to get. Yeah. Sure. I think it's a very sensible one because I tend to agree that this is an is, is ideological barrier between the U.S. and the Soviet, and for that matter, the U.S. and other places, uh, other Eastern cultures, for example, is 
is very much to do with kinds of logic, meaning the kinds of ontology-inducing logic mm -hmm. that are the realities of these cultures. Uh, they agree, of course, in respect to certain bodies of phenomena, as, for example, they tend to agree about, for example, physics. Um, that's because it, it is a universal culture. It's rather like medieval Latin or something, and it's similar in, in its cohesive power, and it has an interlingua. But um, they don't always agree, incidentally, about that. Uh, to the discussion with Palumbo. These are, I was connecting it chiefly to the business about other types of value. The simplest case, and it's my first example, example number one only, of another case of a Lewis logic, which is demonstrably very different. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't represent ontologically a coin. Mm -hmm. What does it represent ontologically? It could represent a possibility, an an, uh, an inconceivability uh, and the flips of the coin. Well, so the coin might disappear in the middle of its flip, or the coin might become a, a, dollar. a, a dollar instead of a dime in the course of its flip. Um, so, so that could be a possibility, a or it could be utterly beyond itself, or it could just go through utterly beyond itself into another coin flipped over, so its coin disappears and reappears flipped. Or it's a coin which converts itself into a dollar bill and then can flip over. But it can't convert itself from a dollar bill into a go away or something. Uh, possibly one can imagine it as. But it may coexist in, in like going away. The dollar bills may be there or not. They're unreal. They're made of paper. They're instead of coins. flipping a coin, one could imagine a, uh, a piece of paper yeah. that we could think of as just flipping. Yeah. But the piece of paper also has the possibility, of, first of all, being burnt yep. and disappearing. It also has the possibility of uh, losing the fact that it has two sides by yep. being connected the strip. in the strip. Yeah. So, so, in that sense, the, we have things yep. that may no longer be able to assign true or false. Yeah, sure. If it's possible it may become a more Sure. Strip. Actually, that's right. That's a nice. Thing. Um, when you say Lewis, I don't know who you're referring to. The, the, well, not Brown, actually. I'm referring to the logician Lewis. Who, as far as I know, was the first person to introduce a logic of possibilities okay. with, the, with the truth value possible in it. Um, it would be rather, actually rather a nice interpretation of this, would be, well, let's put it down, would be your, an example in which you had a piece of paper get a mark of Gordon. Um, okay, it's probably easier to use that one. Paper. A cylinder. A maybe strip. not be thought of as variables, whatever. It can go to a figure which that is joined to that, and that is joined over to that, and that is joined over to that, so that's A, B, C, D point. This, of course, is A, B, D. And this here is a B, but that is D. This is C, and that is the one adjacent to A is D. And that's a nice model of it. 
these are the values of sphere, paper plane, and another interpretation. To make the true value of sphere, you take a piece of paper. To make the true value false, you take a sphere. Uh, sorry, uh, say a sphere or, or a piece of paper and convert mm -hmm. it into a sphere by joining A, B, C, D together. Uh, in between, you would have things that are neither spheres nor pieces of paper. One of which is a Moebius strip, yeah, and the other of which is, is a cylinder. Mm -hmm. And depending which way you do it. Last figure is. Uh, a cylinder, it's just taking a piece of paper, this, this piece of paper here, this piece of paper here, and doing this with it, it's typologically a sphere. Mm -hmm. A simple uh, mm -hmm. kiddies construction for double sphere for making a filling of water. A simple origami sphere. And, um, now, the, these, these things are explored in some detail by, by Jack Cowan in that paper, which was 61 and 63. When is the Lewis's work? Is that must have been dated from 1922 or something. Oh. Something was so. Let's try to focus this just Another a little, little more sure. on the uh, Palumbo discussion for a moment, which we should probably do with him present. And then mm -hmm. I have a suggestion in a few moments to uh, to mm -hmm. just alter the focus and get on with the continuation mm -hmm. of the, our last session. Could you just before that, Paul, if possible, give a, an, another example? Sure. Which will be certainly familiar. Namely, that um, Varela and Gogan, in interpreting one first of Varela Maturana, uh, or to Paises, uh, consider reentrant forms of a Spencer Brown logic. And the Spencer Brown logic is quite opposite because, in fact, the logic of distinction rather than the logic of truth is false. Or so you can model, uh, you can use it to model logics of truth and falsity, certainly, mm -hmm. uh, as you please, ad libitum. It has these connections. and inequality. Um, expressions typically would be Which is reentrant. Or an expression which is doubly reentrant. Put a marker symbol in here. Our show and Marcel Marceau and the art of mind. If this is any interest to what what is f? What is? No, oh, yeah, f equals f is a term introduced under here as a marker, just a, a term, a name, a name, which is attached to the enclosed by that boundary. The distinction made. The space is called a. Mm -hmm. Now, expressions like this are, well, <laughs> the simplest one is a unique expression added by, um, that is Spencer Brown. Uh, this one 
uh, is a new expression added by Gogan and Varela. To well, give a familiar example. Uh, you need to do this too. These are backwards. We're probably. Um, because if you. Mark oh, cross cross is, is not. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. That's what you yep. And I have the bionics. Quite right, yeah. Sorry, apologies. Apologies. Cow and paper. <coughs> oh, good. You've got that one. Excellent. Yeah. And um, <coughs> now these are these I'm sure are familiar because you we're talking about autophysis, we all do. So that's one way of dealing with it. There's another way of dealing with it which is actually more elegant to use Glanville. Um, which is to talk about